This will be the only botling guide you will ever need to climb to the highest ranks as I will be spilling all the secrets that the pros and challenger players don't tell you about so you can be better than 90% of the players in your elo. Most players don't know this but there are very intricate concepts that the best players will always follow in their games regardless of the champions they are playing and it's really not that hard to understand. I will explain each and every one of these concepts to you in this video including why and how they do this and how to recognize these patterns in your own games. Starting off with something that you can even do in the loading screen to give yourself a huge advantage, we begin with the assessment. Simply look at the runes and champions that the enemies have and begin to think of a game plan for the first three waves of the game. Specific champions and matchups are different every game but follow this line of thinking I have in these examples. Let's say my support has Aftershock whereas the enemy support has Guardian. Aftershock has a 20 second cooldown whereas Guardian has a 90 second cooldown level 1. Then theoretically speaking we should want to fight more often since we can effectively proc Aftershock at least 3 times before Guardian is up again. Likewise if I have Hail of Blades and the enemy ADC has PTA, we should take short trades, ordering once or twice before getting out so the enemy ADC cannot get an extended PTA value. Thinking more like this during the lane phase about all 4 champions in the bot lane will guarantee you much more success. Here is a graphic of runes and their basic functionality to help you understand more about these concepts. I think it is pretty self explanatory but if you have runes like Fleet Footwork or Comet in the bot lane you should take short trades and solely wear the enemy's HP down, whereas if you have Conquer or PTA you want to take extended fights. All runes have their own benefits and you must play towards the conditions you chose for the highest chance of winning. And here's a tier list of range in the bot lane for most champions so you get an idea of champions that have the most range versus the champions that have the least range. So for example if you are a Kai'Sa you shouldn't be trying to auto trade with an Ash or Caitlyn, but you can for sure try to out trade a Zaya with autos. And this all leads up to the 3 wave crash. How you play in the first few minutes of the game leading up to the 3 wave crash is the most important part of every single game you play in the bot lane. Let's first talk about the ways you can get to the ideal 3 wave crash and then we'll talk about why it's so important to do so. These are some classic punish slash concepts that you should know about bot lane to get you ahead right from the get go. Starting with the bush cheese, this is a punish where you can make the enemy lose lane if you play your cards right at level 1. Vision is very important and can often be the decider between a winning and a losing trade. So being able to have the first strike is as important as having a matchup advantage. You can always bush cheese if you and your support at least have one ranged ability that can wear the enemy's HP down. The only difference is knowing whether you can do a long trade or a short trade. Let's start with the long trade. Notice in this clip how I'm initially going for a short trade and I was ready to back off. But because the enemy kept fighting, I used Braum as a frontline and hugged the bottom part of the bush so minions don't aggro me. I kept my HP high the entire time and spaced as much as I can so Leona can't stun me, which ends up getting us a kill. Now do keep in mind that I made sure to keep my Conqueror up the entire time and I took this fight knowing that I had Conqueror. The ADC's HP is always the most important in a 2v2 skirmish so spacing as an ADC is very important. The support should usually be the one walking up to tank damage instead. In another world where your support isn't as aggressive or spotting these opportunities, go for a short trade, which usually consists of one auto and one ability. Notice how I was patient with my W waiting for the perfect opportunity to hit two people. If you take short trades like this repeatedly, you will eventually win the lane through having an HP advantage. Next up, the triangle is the way of standing in line with your partner in lane such that you pose a threat to a single player on the enemy side. That way you can always try to get a positional advantage during the fight. This is how it works. By standing on a close line to your partner, you are able to focus the same enemy that your partner is hitting, giving you an advantage if the enemies don't stand on their own line as well. If your support is looking for an engage while you are in China, it's very unlikely that you will be able to do any meaningful damage to the enemy, but your support will most likely lose half their HP. This is why it's always important to look at your own support's positioning as well as the enemy's. Now that we've talked about some ways to help you achieve lane priority, Let's transition that priority into a 3 wave crash and talk about why it's so important. A lot of you might already know about the 3 wave crash but even the highest ranked players mess this up a lot. There are many examples of players securing priority on the first and second wave but they keep pushing and hitting the wave instead of pressuring the enemy off the wave and trying to deny them gold. Because often after securing priority on the first and second wave, there are a lot of players who actually keep hitting the wave instead of letting the minions fight themselves off and end up doing a 2 wave crash instead. Now when you 2 wave crash into the tower too quickly, it ends up being bad for you, and we'll talk about that later. Let's first talk about why the 3 wave crash is so important, since it gives us 3 options to take. 
For the first condition, if the enemy are low HP and our jungler can come to dive in time, we should dive the enemy. Or, if the first condition doesn't apply, we should shove the wave ASAP before the next wave is out and we recall fast for a power spike while the enemy are stuck on their tower farming a huge wave. This allows us to finish our first rotation of the game and allows us to reset and enter the second rotation while the enemy are still stuck on their first rotation, as they have not base for their items yet. And the third option, if we have better conditions than the enemy, we should continuously apply pressure under the enemy tower given that no jungler comes bot lane. If so, we should stay as long as we have higher HP and mana than the enemy. Having these options give us much more leverage as a team over the enemy as they have to play passive and have limited options, because this opens up the game for our jungler to play bot side, whether to invade or dive whereas the enemy jungler will have one less lane to play for if we continue this pressure onto the enemy bot lane. And this brings us to another concept, rotation resets. You can basically think of this like a traditional card game where each player takes a turn and the other player has to wait to retaliate on their own turn. Although League of Legends isn't literally a turn-based game, it is very similar whereas each team takes their own turns, making the best plays they can, while they give up opportunities that they cannot make. Think about all the time where your jungler was ganking top, whereas the enemy jungler dove you, or one jungler takes grubs and the other one takes dragons. That is each jungler taking their own turn to do something on the map, and this applies to all 10 players in the game. Each recall that we take in the bot lane is essentially us ending one rotation and starting another. We recall first because we just shoved the cannon wave and bought our items. Now we are back in lane faster than the enemy and we get to choose what to do with the wave. At this time, the enemy are either recalled or just taking the L and are trying to shove out the next wave before recalling. If we get back into lane fast enough, we can trap the enemy in lane and deny them the recall, which forces the enemy to make a bad decision. Either they have to sit in lane with bad conditions while waiting for the jungler to help them reset the wave while we are in perfect condition, or they have to recall and give up XP and gold. In addition, our jungler will always have more plays on the map to make because they have extra options through our lane prior. Regardless of whether or not the enemy jungler is here to help the enemy, the enemies are always at a disadvantage because they will always lose 2v2, and if the jungler comes help them, our jungler gets to do things on the other side of the map, or our jungler can also counter the enemy jungler's help. This is a big part of the reason why bot lane prior is always emphasized in pro play. You can simply get your team a huge advantage through the possible shutdown of 2-3 players. But in conclusion, for all the concepts combined so far for a good early game, we first do the assessment, then we skirmish on the first and second wave for Pryo, and we try to create a 3 wave crash, and then we either dive, reset, or we keep applying pressure. This should be your standard first rotation for your bot lane gameplay. Every rotation that you play after the first one is simply just either a repeat or a similar pattern as your first one, but after you perfect the first rotation, it isn't hard to learn the rest of the lane phase. That's why the first few waves are so important to understand. However, there is a lot more that goes into the lane phase because every matchup is different, but in general you will see much faster improvement if you think more about the game and the ways of how champions interact with each other and how minion waves work. Watching this video will not make you a challenger tier ADC instantly, but if you follow the fundamentals and keep building your understanding of the ADC role through more guides and playing more games, the process of hitting high elo will be much easier for you than most people. There are a lot more concepts that you should learn about such as how to slow push correctly, how to ward, how to freeze, and much more. All these concepts deserve their own videos and work in combination with the concepts already mentioned in this video to help you get an advantage over the enemy bot lane. If you feel like I helped you learn something new today or if you enjoyed the video, feel free to check out my Patreon where I will be posting more ADC guides and analysis videos on new patches in the upcoming days for only $1.99 a month. It is an extra way to support me on the path of becoming a full-time creator, but please only if you have the means to do so. Watching my videos is the best way to support me so I appreciate you a lot. And I think Patreon is a really good alternative for coaching because the Patreon videos themselves will help teach a lot of concepts that you will learn in coaching sessions anyways and it's a lot cheaper than coaching sessions because Patreon is $1.99 a month and a coaching session one time fee is probably like 30 to 40 or maybe even more. Uh, there are people out there who charge like $400 per coaching. So I would only recommend getting coaching when you're at your wits end and you really don't know how to improve anymore. But I think most people probably won't get that point until they are very far into the game such as Master Tier, Grandmaster, or even Challenger Tier. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.